Hey guys, so I wanted to focus today on how to figure out the maximum amperage for your system. So that's important for a number of reasons. It's important for sizing your wire, for sizing your fuse protection, for sizing your bus bars, and if you're going to be using a battery monitor, a shunt, it's important for sizing that as well. So just to give a little background, I'm sure some of you are familiar with it, but I am running a 48 volt system here. I am using uh, LifePo batteries, so lithium iron phosphate, and I have a 13,000 watt system here. So, and just in case you needed any homework and you were bored one evening, uh, Watt's law and Ohm's law is going to uh, be kind of what I'm talking about today. There's some aspects of that I'm going to be talking about. So if you wanted to research that, it's actually a really good idea to, to do that if you're going to be installing your own system, or even if you have your own system and you're curious about things. So the easiest way to do it is to figure out your total wattage, which in my case, like I said, is 13,000 watts. And you are going to divide that by the nominal voltage, the approximate voltage, which is 51.2 with this chemistry. So when you do that, you come up with 253-ish, um, 255. It depends. As your voltage lowers, you're going to be a little higher, but that's why I have at this point, up until this point, been using the current connected bus bars. They are plenty with some headroom for this system. So there is, going to, there is a surge capacity on these, but it's only one second. So you're not talking about a very long surge with this. Uh, and, and the bus bars, as long as you give it a little headroom, are going to be able to take that. I believe the current connected bus bars have a surge up to 900. Uh, amps but so it's good these even though they're small they're good for a medium-sized system so that's where I think some people uh, get a little sidetracked and that's why I wanted to do a video on this because the uh, the battery bank and correlate and how it correlates to what you're using are a little bit different um, so when you use that figure though that equation as you can see if you were to go down to a 24 volt system which has a 25.6 nominal voltage, I think, you would divide, if you still needed 13,000 watts, you would be dividing that 13,000 watts by 25-ish. And so as you can see, your amperage capacity would have to increase. And that would include your wire, and that would include the bus bars. So these, if you see any of these larger bus bars, so the, the new ones that I've got are 600 amps. Uh, and that would give a very large ceiling. Uh, so that would give you all the way up to, if you were to calculate it, up to close to 30,000 watts of power with a 48 volt system. But if you were to go down to 24 volts, let's say, like I was saying, and you needed that 13,000 watts still, you would, have, you would need to have a very large uh, bus bar and with 12 volt, even larger. So these 1,000 amp bus bars that you'll see online more often would be used for a 24 volt or 12 volt system because the amperage needs increase as the voltage decreases. And I'm not really going to get into the science of that. Like I said, you can read about that, um, do your own homework. That, that's not exactly what the video is about. But I wanted in this intro, I just wanted to cover those facts. And I'm going to get into some of the battery aspects of it too, charging and discharging. And I don't want you to get caught up in the graphics and the CGI that I have here. I just want you to pay attention to the content. So keep that in mind. So I had my daughter draw up some graphics here. Um, so the easiest analogy I've used when describing how DC works in the system is sort of like water in the way that it can fork off and flow in both directions. So in this case, you have one bucket one 100 amp hour battery. So a rack battery, for instance, uh, an EG4, an SOK, or a Trojan battery, all of which can charge and discharge at 100 amps. Not that they should, but they can. So if you're taking the same equation I used before, you would multiply 51.2 by 100. So you're a little over 5,100 watts is the max that that one rack battery can discharge. 
So using that, you could see one of them wouldn't be able to power one of my units fully, my 6,500 watt units. So one of them could potentially power a 3,000 watt unit. So there's a bunch of different ways you can use the equation to size your system. That's just one way. But I also wanted to point out the fact that the batteries, the more you add on to the batteries, let's say you add six of the 100 amp hour batteries, the 100 uh, amp discharge and, and charge batteries, it does not mean that the system is going to be using 600 amps. It is only upon request from the inverter. The inverter pushes and pulls as needed. It'll push a charge current into the batteries and it'll pull as it requests it and needs it, but it will not take more than it can use. So I've seen this question often in the forum and on videos that people buy uh, rack batteries and they're worried because you know there's there's a potential if they bought two racks of 1200 amps of discharge. So they're trying to size their system according to that. But your bus bars, um, your wire, your fuses, your shunts would all be based off of the maximum current that the inverters can push or pull. That is what you're using uh, to gauge it with. And you would use that formula there. You're already going to know the wattage from the inverters, although it may be a little more difficult on a Victron <laughs> um, because of the way they figure their things. But wattage, and then you're going to use that equation, and that will give you that amperage. And in the next graphic, I'm going to get into how it works with multiple batteries. And here we have three 100 amp hour buckets, <laughs> batteries, the bucket bank. Um, so this is a decent analogy in the sense that that center would represent the bus bar. And from there, you could branch off to multiple banks, multiple batteries, and uh, each one would be getting the same amount of flow of current from the inverters or water in this case. But you may only have one cabinet uh, or some rack batteries, and so you may only have one cable, but each of those batteries is its own unit. And each one is getting roughly the same amount of current as long as the cables are around the same length. So for discharging, we have to keep in mind that it isn't always just about, and I covered this in another video a while back, what, how long the battery bank can last during the night or on rainy days, but it's also about how heavily we are discharging the batteries. We don't want to discharge them too heavily or we'll shorten the life of the battery. So if you undersize the battery bank, you have to keep in mind that there's multiple uh, downsides to that, not just the fact that, you know, after one or two rainy days, you're, you're running out of power, but also the fact that you could be taxing the batteries pretty heavily. So then when it comes to charging, I wanted to emphasize the fact that the more buckets you add, the more batteries you add to your system, the more charging current you can be using to charge them. So uh, let's just use this bank, for instance, and say we wanted to be charging at a 0.2C rate, which with a 100 amp hour battery like this is going to be 20 amps. So then let's use that and say we want 60 amps total. So whether you have a charge controller or whether you have an all-in-one uh, converter like the 6500, um, you can set it on 60 amps, or with these, for instance, they come factory setting with 60 amps, and that would be perfect with one of these for these three batteries. So let's say then you have a rack of signature solar batteries. That is six batteries total, so each one would be 20 amps, so then you're up to 120 amps. You can up your charging. So you're, in other words, you're turning the faucet up a little bit, but it's flowing equally to each bucket, so it's fine. So the more buckets you add, the more flow you can add, and so on. If you double your rack batteries and say you have 12, then you're looking at 240 amps you can charge with. So that's something I think people uh, lose track of maybe, but I wanted to definitely cover that aspect of it too. The more you add, the better in both aspects of it. Well, I hope that video was helpful. Thanks for watching, guys, and feel free to leave any questions below.